And here I am again. Hi, everybody. I'm R.J. Ogren, and welcome to uh, Paintings and Stories with R.J. Ogren, Paintings and Disney Stories with R.J. Ogren, although I have other stories that are not Disney. Uh, I hope you're all going to join me today. I'm working on two paintings. I'm going to turn this uh, up here, and you can see uh, what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be putting in some, uh, blocking in some colors in the background. Uh, of this painting and just behind me you can see the painting uh, from the stretch room of this lady that I'm working on and I've got almost her face done I don't have her, her chin uh, or her mouth finished and her hair is not done but almost done with her face so uh, I'm back <laughs> it didn't lose me Although I'm trying to lose myself, so, <laughs> so, oh, hi, Josh, and, jeez, uh, I've had my glasses on painting all day, wait a minute, oh, yeah, hey, Jamie Wright, and Romina, hi, and I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to do something here with, the, with this, uh, yeah, good to see you, too, and uh, Josh, Amanda, jo John, Oh, just everybody's jumping right in. Hey, it's going to be a party today. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I've got this in a much better light so you can see what's going on on the painting. So I'm going to actually paint on this pretty soon because then I'll, I'll let a little bit of it dry and then I'll show you some uh, blending in the background. And gosh darn, I'll take the Band-Aid off my finger. Okay. <laughs> This probably applies to me. Actually, this is from, from Disney World. Uh, this was in our studio uh, behind Small World. Our, the four of us artists were located in that place uh, in the 70s and early 80s. And uh, I love this. So this dates from 1970, well, let's say 75 at least. And... Uh, no, I can put that away. But this this kind of fits me. Use the right ladder. I need to use the uh, the, the the right feet, the right hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. I am. Uh, tell you real quick. I'm. Yeah. Tomorrow morning uh, at eleven thirty, uh, they will put me to sleep and uh, pull out some uh, teeth, especially one here that is. Uh, I got infected, and it's it can't be safe. It's way at the back of my mouth. I'm so excited. Yes, and then for a couple of days, I'll eat uh, soft stuff. <laughs> I told Susie, please make some jello and some pudding and get some ice cream. And ice cream. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I've got that going on. Uh, and basically Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I can't really do anything anyway. So that's why we schedule it for Friday. And then, um, oh gosh, what else has been going on? I, I keep hurting myself. I, uh, yesterday was, was terrible. I, we have a small skunk that has managed to figure out how to, well, he dug under our uh, part of our, our fence and uh, was getting to where the bird, bird feeders are and just having a feast every night. And of course, it was right outside our window in our kitchen. And so um, I decided to get this uh, green wire fencing that you can get. It's in a roll. And uh, I cut pieces of it to block out sections to make sure the skunk couldn't get back in. And, and I was cutting it too with, with, you know, with wire cutters. And then I reached down to move a piece. And of course, there's all these little prongs sticking out of the wire. And I managed to not just cut my finger, but I caught it. And then I slid my slid, trying to get my finger off of it, and sliced a half inch slice of my finger. And then I reached down to move the thing and stuck my finger again. And so in two different spots. And I, I, it's yeah, it's the it's the the middle finger, so I'm not going to hold my finger up. All right, uh, not going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and it's on my right hand, so I just took the band-aid off because 
it's making it difficult because I'm using the laptop and I try to slide the picture or look at something you all are saying and uh, doesn't want to move. Um, <laughs> Cindy, well, everybody's getting out here. Uh, Missy Rogers, Romina, hi, uh, hi, hi, Ar hi there. Uh, party at RJ's house. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's, it's not going to be a party the next three days after I have the tooth out. Uh, but uh, it's not bothering me right now, which is great because um, uh, the uh, infection has been taken care of. Uh, but then anyway, so now I have an injured finger. I've got the tooth that's bothering me. Uh, I do have to take Advil once or twice a day uh, when it starts to hurt. Hopefully I won't do it during the broadcast because I didn't take anything today. So. If I start going, oh, God, um, just ignore me. Uh, opens back up. Oh, Phantom Manor opens back up in October. Hey, wait, okay, thank you, Josh. All right, everybody. Um, Rosemary, a longtime friend. I, you finally found me. Yes, I'm here. Um, and uh, I decided, I tried last week. I, I broadcast paintings and stories, Disney stories with R.J. Organ, and realized a lot of people couldn't find me. Sorry. Uh, please join my groups. I've listed, listed them on here. Um, buy our books. I've listed them on here. <laughs> Go to Sissy's blog. I've listed it on here. But to finish then, last night around, I don't know, six o'clock, something like that, um, I had on slippers. I got relaxed and had just some light blue jeans on and a t-shirt and stuff. And anyway, I took my slippers off and I was walking between the couch and we have this really fantastic big coffee table that looks like three huge books stacked. Um, and uh, it's very heavy. And I caught my little toe on the side and uh, almost ripped my toe off and managed to fall. Uh, fortunately, I didn't hit anything. If it hit my head, it wouldn't have mattered because my head is it's already gone. You know, <laughs> I leave my head in the freezer when I'm not using it. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes I leave it in the railing of the stairs. You never know when you might just be going upstairs and might need your head again. Uh, but uh, fortunately, I didn't, but it sure hurt for a couple minutes. And uh, then I got up and limped around, and now I'm here. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyway. <laughs> oh, thank you, Catherine. Happy I'm feeling better. Yeah, I am too. I'll feel a lot better after I get this tooth out and uh, uh, can go there. And oh, and I got I got to tell you this first before I'm going to paint now in just a second because I do have some other funny things to tell you. Um, <laughs> oh, I forgot what it was. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, it's about Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne is going to be on the show with me next week. Yay. And so please join us uh, if you want to ask questions uh, about what it was like to be a ghost host in the Haunted Mansion, uh, to be, uh, uh, of course, Sleepy the Dwarf, which she did uh, in, in costume, and Smee, which she did in costume a lot, too. Uh, ask those questions you've always wanted to ask people that were in characters. And uh, any questions about her her books, uh, her book, uh, Ribbons, a great novel, buy it. And uh, <laughs> anything else that's going on, of course, about our, our new book that we're working on. And uh, hi, Natalie. <laughs> so, and Ken, you're there. Um, <laughs> how you doing, Ken? Um, so, she's going to be on next week. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, will in fact, I will again show you the uh, Mickey Mouse uh, shoes and the Mickey Mouse hands I have from uh, 1979 when I was creating the uh, uh, walk around character of Jiminy Cricket and we were using discarded Mickey Mouse feet and hands. Um, and you'll be able to see the tennis shoe inside the, inside the foot. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'll post pictures of that. Uh, probably the day before, uh, uh, so next Wednesday. All right, now, um, about this painting. Um, I've made changes to it as I've 
and I've whited out parts, gone back in and made more changes. Um, I was going to have her with her long gloves. This is, of course, Jessica and Roger in the Haunted Mansion. So they're in the stretch room with the, the hitchhiking ghosts uh, scaring them. And uh, she is now <laughs> holding on to <laughs> Roger's ear. It's actually stretching and making his ear real long. So it's a, a cartoonish thing. And it's kind of pulled his head back a little bit. And uh, uh, I am going to put some detail in the background, including part of one of the stretch paintings right here. So you'll just see a little bit of it. Um, and that'll be kind of cool, too. So, uh, but one of the funny things I did when I was doing this last week and sketching it, I had their hair reversed. All right. <laughs> so, it's a long story. But anyway, I had her hair falling across her left eye, and it's supposed to be over her right eye. So I've changed that and uh, have now made the costume more much more closer to what it actually is, including the long sleeves with the black uh, cuffs down here and the, and the frill, the white. Um, and I'm working on this right here because she's so over, well endowed, I guess. Anyway, so yeah, it's more accurate. I put a little color here. So I'm gonna put in some colors. Um, Oh, thank you, Ryan. You love the new one. Really great. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's, it's a fun one to paint. And I do enjoy doing the stretch room paintings. You can see the one back here I'm working on, which uh, should be done um, Monday. And then I have to take a break from this. I'll still work on it some, but I have to get a, uh, a painting ready for a wedding. And that'll take about a week when I get that done and jump back on some other. Hey, I, I'm just What's one painting after another? It's fantastic. And uh, I am booked into uh, December now. And uh, actually, I'm booked into going into the first of the year. So quite busy. If you're interested in a painting, message me on Facebook. I'll be glad to send you information. And uh, so, OK. And. Oh, Christy, you like this too. Okay, I'm on a roll here because everybody likes this. Hey, Bob. Bob Livermore. Great friend from high school, Norland High. If anybody else out there from Norland High, hey, Norland High was in uh, North Miami, about three miles from the beach. Not close enough as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, the funny thing was, of course, I, I reversed this. It's a good thing I didn't paint it before I, when I had it backwards or hair. Now, the funny story is that I did a painting uh, years ago for a good friend uh, and uh, from high school. <laughs> and he is an avid golfer and loved Arnold Palmer. And he, he commissioned me to do a painting of Arnold Palmer on the, uh, oh gosh, was it the 14th green? I'm, I may have that wrong. It's a sh it's the shortest uh, uh, hole, and uh, and then the crowd. You can see some of the crowd in the lower foreground, uh, almost a bird's eye view of this whole thing. So you can see the water and the bridge going over and everything, and you can see Arnold Palmer over there. <clears throat> well, I found a picture of Arnold finally that I could use. And I reversed the picture, so I have it right. I did the painting, uh, <laughs> sent it to Norm down in Florida. And uh, it wasn't long later, he called me up and he says, uh, painting looks great, we love the painting. But Arnold's glove is on his wrong hand. When I reversed the picture and was painting, of course, in the reversal, it now was on the wrong hand. So <laughs> he had to send the painting back to me and I had to paint it on the other hand anyway. So it's our little joke. Um, so Norman Koff has that. Anyway. <laughs> Another crazy story. Um, and uh, 
Do I know if Bob Ross' son, Steve, is still painting publicly at all? You know, Jamie, that's a good question, and I do not know. I, I have not been in touch uh, with him at all since uh, uh, Bob died years ago, and of course we had moved uh, uh, up to Virginia, and then of course to Illinois about 14, 15 years ago. So, no, I, I don't know. Amazingly, I still get a check every quarter from Bob Ross organization for the two cartoon videos I did. And, and all of you, before you rush out and buy the cartoon videos, they are very basic cartooning videos that uh, Bob Ross had me do. Uh, and and uh, anyway, so <clears throat> wish I could tell you more, but I can't. Romina, you're out. I see you moved the ghost too. Yes, I did. Uh, this ghost was over here, and I shifted him over here because it, it filled the space better. I even shifted the ghost down here a little bit closer in. Oh, and the neat thing is now too, because uh, she's looking down at him with this sort of like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. Look on her face. He actually is gripping her arm, her sleeve right there. And uh, of course, she's holding on it her dear life on Roger Rabbit's ear. So, uh, and this ghost here, I didn't move him, but uh, I did fix his hat, which is floating. Just fun stuff. <clears throat> now, okay. So, uh, I'm gonna have my glasses on. And what is your favorite thing to paint? Okay, uh, Alex, oh. Well, Disney paintings are my favorite thing to paint, but, uh, that's pretty general. I love painting the stretcher and paintings. I'd say any of them. I, I, I enjoy these kinds of paintings a lot. And I also like the paintings that I get asked to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I forgot to get coffee. Hold on. I'm going to go get... No, I'm not. I'm fine. <laughs> I just had some before we went on air. So I don't have my mug in front of me, though. So I can't show you what it was. Oh well, uh, but I know I like uh, I like painting any of the cartoon characters, but I, I like doing the ones where I, uh, people ask me to paint uh, inside the attractions or, or even outside and put some of the family members in the in the painting too. That's a lot of fun. Um, so a little bit of everything. Now what I'm going to do, and I've got my handy dandy. Uh, cups here of uh, glad coffee and painting in and, and holding on to and let's see that's not that one yet uh, I gotta find the right one. Oh, there we go okay um, I'm gonna okay this this paint's been in here a little bit and I need to add some water to it and thin it out a little bit with acrylics they do have thinner you can get uh, I tried it many years ago, and find I work. I find that found out. I find out too. That I work just fine using uh, water. And the and I've talked about this before on other shows. I used to be an oil painter years ago, uh, back in the seventies. I've done oils once in a great while, but I like working with acrylics and. Um, I love working with acrylics. It's neater. You don't have the, the oil paint smells and, and all the other things. And it, it used to be that they've gotten safer now, but actually the, the ingredients in oil paints and you're using turpentine and, and linseed oil and it actually was going into your skin and into your body. It wasn't good. So um, they've changed the paints now too. But I like the acrylics because the acrylics I have found when I first started painting acrylics in 1973, everybody was saying, oh, don't paint acrylics. We don't know. They're not as good as oils. Well, they're turning out to be far superior to oil paints because I have paintings uh, that, well, you can see them on, on our website. Uh, some of my paintings go back to, uh, well, 73. And uh, they look like I just painted them. They look great. Brian, underwater painting, underwater oil painting, 20,000 leagues. Yes. If, 
if you get if you buy our first book together in a dream there is a story about me using oil paint from a tube to paint on one of the divers in 20,000 leagues under the sea we called it 20k it's easier to say Any. okay uh, this yeah okay this is a tan color yeah I'm gonna use this this actually is the ceiling and um, I'm gonna use this brown brush right now Oops. Let me tighten that up I've got the painting tipped a little bit toward uh, toward me on the easel here uh, it seems to work better for the light that I've had trouble with because I've got regular lighting coming in and so I'm just doing this now. This is just a base coat. Uh, and of course, she's holding a candelabra. So I will paint over this uh, after I do a base coat on everything. And for the larger areas, I'll switch to a uh, flat brush. And this candelabra is not perfect right at the moment. I'll make it look much better when I paint the details in here. And there we go. And this is your hand right here I'm painting around. So what I'll be doing is after this dries, I will come back when I paint out the ceiling again, the final coat, I will do some uh, blending uh, of a darker color and blend it out so it just goes to dark. You'll, you won't see, it won't all be this light color. I'm going to paint over here by this hat. Now, here's an interesting thing the hitchhiking ghosts um, are, of course, you can see through them. They're going to be a a greenish blue so I'm gonna I have to paint through their their outfits because then I will paint with a dry brush effect uh, and blending effect paint them over the the background colors so you so they look like ghosts so you can see through them. Um, so what I'm doing here is, just so I have a little bit of a guide, uh, leaving a little bit of a, of a line for the moment. Just leaving a little bit of the canvas bare so I can see what I sketched So, see, he's got the hair there, and he's got his hair on that side. The brim of his hat. I know, it looks crazy. So, <laughs> so this whole face for the moment will be this color not his whole face though even his eyeballs seems to look kind of lightly right there so I can still see some of my lines but it goes to there because that is actually where the picture rail for the crown molding is I like houses <clears throat> that have crown molding. I, I love old houses. That's why we bought an old house. Um, we have uh, uh, crown molding in some rooms. Uh, some was uh, removed in remodeling, so I'm going to replace it. Uh, we have these big, wide uh, baseboards, uh, originals in this house. Uh, and uh, trying to decide whether or not to put wainscoting back in. 
wainscoting is is the the lower part of the wall where you see it might be wood and then above it is this wallpaper or painted and there's a railing right there and the the it's called a chair rail it's on above the wainscoting for exactly that purpose it was so when they put chairs up against the wall they didn't damage the wall surface uh same thing with the picture rail which is part way up the wall almost near the ceiling and then you went up higher and you had the crown molding all the way around the ceiling edge the picture rail was there to hang pictures from you to well you see them in old houses like in in some of the really old homes in america where there are now museums and stuff and they're hanging by two uh, by a wire that comes down from the picture rail it's my lesson for today <laughs> And um, I said, nobody's commenting, so I'll, you're, all just, you're all just watching me. <laughs> uh, RJ, keep talking. It's so much fun to try to keep talking and painting and talking about different subjects at the same time. There we go. See, now I can see enough of him that. Yeah, you can sort of see it. And let's see, it comes over to this corner right here. And this is going to go up this way. So actually going up there and there and right across here is the crown molding. Um, there you go. <laughs> They didn't put picture rails in on a mansion. They had enough enough things that were stretching. They need to add one more thing. Uh, so what I would do next here is get a nice flat brush. It's one of my favorite brushes here. That is a I can't read it anymore. But anyway, it's this one here. Um, so I can quickly fill in and we'll put water to that. Now, in all my paintings, uh, I will. I will paint the edges of the painting. Uh, in other words, up here. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But, um, it, it's, it finishes the painting better, even though it'll, it'll probably be framed. Uh, but if anybody wants to hang it without framing it, they can't. Now, I, I've got flames on these candles right now I'm drawn in, but I'm just going to paint over them because put those in easily later and so you'll be able to see this there that line I'm probably painting right out of the picture aren't I yeah okay all right put that brush away now now, I'm going to put a little color on them, too. I started, I mixed the colors, base colors uh, for her. Those aren't bright, what you're seeing, but ignore that. <laughs> now, the, uh, the molding stuff is... Much darker. Wood. So, this is the part of the candelabra that I'm painting next to there. Get around his hand. And actually, there's there's two levels of wood on this.
So, I get so many lines on here as I was making changes. I'm not too concerned about the lot. I'm gonna check. I'm just gonna read all the lines. The line separating these two pieces of of crown molding, because I can come back in and fix that later. Now. This goes to, I'm getting into her. Um, this is her sleeve coming up and more sleeve. And of course, we don't see through her. Oh, I should have painted that. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Yeah, this is here. So we paint down to this guy's hat. And I'm just using, uh, this is just burnt umber I'm using right now. This. So, got to paint this through his hat. Again, I'll leave a little bit of, now I definitely will leave a little bit of white there so I can see it for right now. And uh, I'll fix that right above there. And and there we go. So this is supposed to be like this. There was another line there because I had changed where the molding was. And I think it'll add to this painting a lot to have the uh, um, part of one of the hitchhiking ghosts in the background. There you go. Now it makes more sense. Okay. And the where's the light color? That's white. That's your face. Got all these colors. Ah. This will be the. I do have more molding going up there too. The picture frame is going to be a lighter color. It'll have some darks in it. But for a color, for a blocking color or base color, I'm just using this. And. There's this ghost hand right here. Uh oh, I hear, I hear Suzanne and Libby. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Susie said sorry. <laughs> she forgot I was on. Anyway, uh, okay. And let's see, picture frame. Okay, the picture frame goes, you see, through his arm right there. Oops, I just, two squirrels chasing each other outside the window. Okay, your hair. And the other, let's see, where is it? All right, you can't see the. This side of the picture frame until you get down here, and she's blocking. All right, and then there's the bottom of the frame coming across and disappearing behind Roger Rabbit. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Anybody? Anybody making comments? Everybody went quiet. Now oh, let's just watch it. Oops, wait a minute. Oh. Oh, Romina. Oh, you did make a comment. Hi. Um, okay. Um, I am in chapter 10 of your first book, and I love it. Well, thank you. That's nice to hear. 
Um, your stories are funny, but your wife's stories are ones that I can relate to. See, she's she keeps thinking your stories, RJ, are all funny. I don't have very many funny stories, but hers are great, and they really uh, uh, take you into what it was like to work in the areas of entertainment she was in. So it'll be fun having her on next week. Um, and anyway, you can really relate to her stories. The passion and pride is one I remember as a cast member in the 80s. It was, oh, I have this up. Um, it was a real honor to work for Disney back then. Well, that's right. You worked there. Were you at Disney World, Romina? Because Susie was there working there until 94. So we were, that's when we moved to Virginia. So now you have to answer that. I think I asked you that before and I forgot. Uh, oh, Anna, Olivia. Yeah, anybody new, if, or anybody new, old friends that are joining, whatever. Uh, if you're new, I'm R.J. Orgren. I was an audio, an audio animatronic artist in the 70s into the early 80s with three other artists uh, in a studio, uh, art art studio that was behind Small World uh, Attraction. And we worked on all the figures and all the attractions. All the sets came under us. We did all the props. Uh, we did all the murals, uh, anything you saw, <clears throat> even on the outside of uh, the murals going into attraction stuff, we did that stuff. So we were quite busy. And of course, we've written books about it. But Romina, that's so nice. My wife will be so happy to, to see that. And uh, let me know if it's okay what you just wrote, Romina. I hope you will, uh, uh, when you finish our books, uh, go on Amazon and write a review for us. We really appreciate it. It helps uh, the sales of our books, uh, keeps them going. And uh, certainly, I think you, if you like the chapter she's written, I think you'll love her novel, Ribbons. Um, I worked there in 88, 89 in attractions and guest relations. Ah, you were there when we were there. All right. At Disney World. Yay. Um, and attractions, oh, that's funny. I wonder if we cross paths. Um, oh, thank you. You definitely write a review. Now, which attractions were you in? Which ones were you working in? <laughs> Susie, at that point, was actually still working in uh, uh, entertainment uh, uh, management and uh, doing uh, special events and, and uh, convention shows, things like that. So unless we went on an attraction that you were working on, we might have run into you, who knows? I was always out at the uh, uh, at Walt Disney World because Suzanne still worked there. And I was still connected to Disney World very strongly at that time because everybody I knew was still uh, still there, most people. And, uh, uh, and I was doing uh, parades uh, directing parades, building floats. Uh, I was getting Disney to be in the parades. Uh, in fact, I was uh, building some uh, uh, set pieces for some of the live uh, entertainment shows at Disney World. So I was still doing stuff, yeah. Space Mountain, oh, cool, okay. And later Fantasyland and Snow White, Teacups, and later Mickey's Birthday Land. All right, I'm sure we saw you. Can we go back in time and we go back and say hi? <laughs> Why not? Okay. Um, <laughs> that is so cool. We need to talk more. <laughs> you know, our, our, our second book, Remembering the Magic, we actually uh, got uh, people that we had worked with, um, like Bev Bergeron, who was uh, in the Diamond Horseshoe Review, the original, uh, the magician and comedian. And um, he and I did a book together, in fact, uh, Willard the Wizard. But uh, anyway, uh, and also other people that were in characters with Suzanne uh, and other areas, uh, we got them to put in some stories uh, of theirs into our book. So they would write about something or some things that happen, usually quite funny. And uh, and then we Suzanne would take them just like she takes what I write 
and edit it and, and make make it look even better. So anyway, oh hi Donna. <laughs> okay, um, again, let me let me point out, Suzanne will be on the show with me next week, and so you can ask all kinds of questions about being in costume uh, characters like she was. Uh, you know, about the monorail, of course, both of us were on, I was on monorails for only three months and then suddenly got the job as one of the four artists and I was all of a sudden in management. I, so, big jump overnight. Uh, very lucky break and then Suzanne took my place on monorails. True story. And, uh, and then she eventually got into characters and went into entertainment management. And then later on, the last year and year and a half two years she was there she wanted to go back into the park and there were no openings management wise for her to shift into or anything else she said the heck with it i just want to be working with people on attractions so she went back into that uh took a, a cut in pay we did we at that time we were we were fine we didn't need to make all that money uh and uh, she worked on the Haunted Mansion and Country Bear Jamboree and Tiki Birds and, oh, her favorite, the Shooting Gallery. <laughs> Country Bear, she liked. Her favorite, of course, is Haunted Mansion, which she did the most. So if you were in 93, 94 going into the Haunted Mansion, you most likely were greeted by Suzanne. And if you were there in uh, going to Disney World in uh, 1978, particularly that year, and you saw Sleep of the Dwarf or Smee, it was probably Suzanne. And there was one point, if you actually ran into Baloo, it was me, but I was only did it for one half hour for one day. That's another story, it's in the book. Um, oh, and I did post, oh, okay, this is neat. I posted a picture of, uh, of the Paramount Theater in Aurora, Illinois, where I was born, <laughs> where we now live again after all these years. And uh, it's like eight blocks to the theater. It's right down by the Fox River. Uh, it's beautiful. It's historic. It's in all the historic theater books. Uh, it was built in like 1920, around somewhere in there. And it is spectacular. Of course, they do. Uh, uh, Broadway tour shows. Uh, we're in fact going to go see Wizard of Oz uh, January 6th, which is Suzanne's birthday. And uh, and there's some other shows we want to see that are coming. But on and they do all kinds of neat stuff. But on Monday nights, uh, every couple of weeks they have a, a movie night, and they of course from the flies they drop in a big movie screen. And we just saw on Monday night this week uh, Tootsie. And it was only a dollar to get in to see the movie. And then, of course, they had concessions so we could get popcorn and everything else. And I think for the we took we took uh, Alex, our grandson, and Libby, our, our soon-to-be granddaughter, and uh, <laughs> took them to the movie. So $4 for the four of us, plus uh, large popcorn and drinks. Uh, we, we shared our popcorn and drinks. We spent, what was it, eight? 14 18 dollars it was that was it we had a blast so much fun to see that movie on the big screen again uh kimberly i agree it is a beautiful theater yes uh janice loving this painting my husband's favorite late get i think i'm missing some of what you're saying there i'm sorry um sorry janice uh anyway your husband's favorite Yes, I do. Okay. Now, um, and let me look real quick. Um, oh, you saw, if you, probably a lot of you saw this week too, I, I did a posting of the um, uh, mascot from University of Miami, my alma mater. I graduated in 72. Uh, and I made the second generation, created the second generation Ibis costume for the uh person to wear that is the mascot person. <coughs> and the character, the, the bird's name is Sebastian. <clears throat> and I'm proud of the fact that the costume I made was the one who rode in the 
uh, parade with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the coach, when we won our first national championship uh, in 1983. And, um, but also uh, a few years back when it was Sebastian's 50th birthday, I did this painting, which you actually can go, if you didn't see it on my posting this week, you can go in uh, our website. Oh, I forgot to put our website up there. It's rjherman.com anyway. Uh, and look under paintings and You'll see the Ibis with a, a big U, and he's he's on Broadway, basically wearing a top hat and tails, and carrying a, a cane and everything. It's I had fun painting it, and actually it was given to uh, I did it for the uh, President Shalala, who's now retired as president of University of Miami, and they of course then in the last few years built this beautiful new alumni center on campus, and. Uh, uh, first thing, of course, that happened was uh, we found they uh, just last year they put our books uh, that we co-wrote and also the one I wrote of Design of Fear into the uh, uh, Robbie Library uh, at the University of Miami Alumni Center. And uh, I just found out just this past week that the painting I had done of the Ibis is in the Sebastian Cafe. Uh, it's not the main dining room, but it's a, a, a cafe, and it's really neat. So I put a picture of it where it's located, right in, I uh, guess, on the wall at the end of the food line, so everybody sees it. That was pretty fun. At least I thought it was. Uh, okay, uh, let me look real quick, see what some of you are saying before I, oh, okay. Nobody else saying anything else. I hope I didn't miss any on there. Um, so, okay, now uh, I'm going to paint a little bit more. Oh, my, oh, <laughs> Sandy, our daughter-in-law, we were over at the house seeing our son, Sean, and our grandson, Fletcher, this past week, and she had, she bought me two Matchbox cars, and there are a series, there's eight of these that are all Mickey Mouse, I guess, for his 90th. And she bought me the, the this one, of course, uh, Steamboat Willie, and then the Fantasia one. So we're going to try to get the others. And I'm going to leave them in the packages and hang them here in my studio as if I don't have enough things hanging on the walls. But I just thought those were great. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, okay. Um, oh, and the thing came up. Uh, I think Romina, I think you posted it uh, about the uh, three caballeros, which are in the Mexico pavilion in, in the attraction ride, uh, of whether or not those were the ones that had been in the Mickey Mouse review in the 70s at Walt Disney World, and ones that I worked on. And yes, uh, it turns out, you, in fact, Romina, you posted that. You found an article uh, that, that stated, because I thought they were. I said, boy, those sure look like the ones I did. Uh, and they are. Uh, they made the trip to Japan uh, and, and took them out of Disney World, which really upset us and a lot of people. And then they, the, the attraction at uh, uh, Mickey Mouse Review at Tokyo Disneyland closed about 10 years ago now, something like that. But anyway, they took those three figures and brought them and put them in the Mexico Pavilion, which I thought was really cool. So, there you go. I'm done with that. And, oh, I have 10 minutes. So, why don't I paint? Look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to paint so you can see some more. Now, this is not exactly the color. Your hair is going to be a finished color. I'm looking in this light. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a reddish orange, but it's pretty dark. But this is a nice base color that actually I was using on the stretch room painting back there and I'm working on but this will lay out her hair there we go getting a little bit of brown in And if those of you who joined late, uh, when I showed this last week, 
uh, the sketch on this, when I was doing it, I had her hair reversed the wrong way. It was falling over her uh, left eye. So I made that change, plus other changes. Uh, actually, I, uh, I moved this ghost over that's behind her, move this one over a little bit, have him now gripping her sleeve, and I changed from uh, having her gl long gloves that that uh, Jessica has. I made them the actual costume, so this costume will actually be more accurate. And of course, I reversed her hair. So it is now correct. I'm, I am going to, the top of the costume right here has, has a collar that's black, uh, sort of bat wingish, and then has the uh, uh, blouse under it, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that on her because of her being so well endowed there. Um, but anyway, and Jessica has, very oval face, but it, the side of her face does come in just a little bit. There's a slight, uh, uh, it comes out slightly at her cheekbone. So now, and I wanted to get her hair falling more this way, obviously. And I'm going to do something else here. Now, around on this part of the wall is a wallpaper. And actually, this is a corner. This is another corner coming down. Um, there's two pieces of wide wood trim coming down. And then down here is the uh, actually very high wainscoting. Um, and a, and a ledge right on there. So, anyway. Oh, there we go. I'm a little more connected this week. My, my show last week was kind of fractured. <laughs> Of course, that was also when my last week when I was on was when my my tooth was really bothering me. And for those of you who just joined, uh, yes, I am going tomorrow uh, to have the tooth removed, and it was infected. So uh, it wasn't fun. I'm gonna get a little bit of white right here so I can. And wait a minute, Janice. Uh, yeah, you just went on the Mexico ride last week. Glad I got to see your figures. Oh, nice, cool. Uh, I I didn't create the originals, but I did get to work on them uh, a couple of times when they were at Disney World in the Mickey Mouse review. Uh, what we of course would do would now those figures, almost all those figures except for the human figures like uh, uh, Cinderella and the Prince. Uh, Harry Godmother, let's see, Snow White, uh, Alice in Wonderland. They were the only ones that had skins. I think I got them all right. Uh, so we put those skins on and painted the skins with acetone based paint, which dries instantly. So you have to be very fast with it to blend. But then all the other figures in that attraction were all fiberglass. Um, so they were all hard shells. And we actually, you ready for this? We used house paints to paint them and, and acrylic tube paint. We mixed the two together, but uh, a lot of house paints. It just, it worked well, it went on well. Um, and uh, uh, we didn't have, if we had figures that were gonna be outside, uh, as an example, the Indian on Main Street, the cigar store Indian that doesn't, so glad it doesn't have cigars. But the Indian there, uh, and the one, and the other Indian is over in uh, Frontierland. 
Um, I painted those a couple times, totally redid them. And um, then we had to, after we painted them, or I painted them, or whoever, then we had to put a clear coat on them. And so they wouldn't be real shiny. We had actually had a flattener we could put in the clear coat urethane. It was a clear urethane mix. And that would blow it out. And then we could put that on. Uh, this hour flies by. I always feel we need more minutes. I'm with you. <laughs> I, I look at the time and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to paint. Now, this is a little dark uh, for, the, uh, like, a little bit now, for the inside of his ears. But they are, there we go. And in case you're wondering, that's this, this hair piece. <laughs> What's Roger Rabbit? It's so funny. Now, this ear starts to get wider right there, and then she's gripping his ear, holding on for dear life uh, while he holds her up. And then, of course, the ear comes back up. And she's holding it. And this ghost now I have holding on, gripping her arm. That's why she's looking down somewhat in terror. And uh, you can see the look on Roger's face there. Now, okay. All right. I did that. And I want to do this real quick because I specifically, this is why, the, yeah, the hour goes so fast. Everybody slow this time down. <laughs> Don't. If, you, if, if you watch it on the rerun, Maybe it'll be more time. I don't know. Uh, huh? <laughs> anyway, I mixed these colors this morning. You can sort of see there. One's a darker than the other. The darker color is the base color for her dress. And I'm going to quickly paint this in. God, I can't believe how fast the time is. I, I do. I, I get talking about uh, stuff in the attractions, other crazy things going on, uh, how I try not to injure myself. Actually, when I stubbed my toe last night and fell, uh, I almost hit my head, which would not have been good because I suffered a severe um, uh, head injury uh, four years ago now um, and a fall and was laid up for like three months. Um, thank God I survived it. And uh, they told me, don't do that again. They don't have to tell me twice. Uh, so anyway, all right, that's her, that's her apron right there. And this is Roger's hand, and arm, well, his arm, yeah, hand and arm. Hand and arm. And now I'm, I'm debating on this uh, wallpaper on the wall here of the part of the stretch room because it's, uh, it's two, three different colors and it's stripes. Um, I'd like to put it in. It just takes a little time because it's all straight lines. and I don't know. I'll figure it out. I want it to be fairly close to what it's supposed to be. Now we got her, her skirt, which swings up a little bit, which would be where her foot is. And she has a very long skirt because Jessica has very long legs. And my, oh, I'm painting out of the picture. Oh, I just, right there. <laughs> this is the bottom actually, right where I'm at right now. So um, let's get over here by Roger's arm again. I have a feeling I'm going to go over by a few minutes. Um, sorry. There we go. So, yeah, and that will come over here. And then the upper part, I'm going to, it's going to look a little weird because, like I said, I'm trying to figure this out up here 
uh, around her breasts because of the way the actual costume goes. And because there's she has a blouse and also a black collar. I'm just gonna paint right over the button so I can fix that. Okay. And she has a very tiny waist. And the costume actually has part of the, uh, what would you call that? A little waistcoat type of thing? Because she has a blouse on under, it's what they wear. And then this flares out a little bit like that. And let's see, uh, oh, actually, yeah, there's her. There we go, that's like that. And then her sleeves, now, right there is the bottom of the candelabra she's holding. And there's part of her sleeve. This part of her sleeve up here is black. And then the, the lace for her blouse is there. Um, I'm gonna finish this. Now, when I get back to this um, painting in the next uh, couple of weeks, I will be painting on it again on the show. So you'll get to see the progress. But now it's starting to make more sense, isn't it? Um, here's Roger's ear. Um, Like I said, he has a little top knot of crazy hair that's red, but I, I've got, and it's almost the same color as her hair. I'll have to change it a little bit so it doesn't run into her hair in the background because it'll look like it's part of her hair. Uh, right here on her sleeve is uh, where the, this is the hand of the ghost that's holding her arm. There's part of his ear there. And just so this makes more sense, I don't think you mind me doing just a couple of quick things here. Um, good luck tomorrow with the surgery. Oh, thank you, Romina. We'll be thinking of you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you can bet that I'm going to uh, definitely let them knock me out. Uh, so uh, I'm going to put this in real quick, and then I'll stop. So. So this is the black part of her sleeve. Cuff. And it actually V's up, but then there's her hand right there. And up here, uh, same thing. That's part of the candelabra, which is kind of kind of wonky right at the moment. I'll fix that. That's the frill. Of course, the sleeve is starting to drop down a little bit. So there you go. That's that's it for today. Um, this I did have um, two greens mixed because this this green in here is a lighter green for her apron, and it also has black stripes on it which I will put in, and it also has a white frill around the edges. And this is definitely the last thing I'm putting in, but now you'll be able to see Roger. Much better. Ta-da!
and that's it. And it looks like it's five after four, and I'm going to have my last cup of coffee because I'm losing my voice. Uh, uh, Janice, yes, good luck. Hopefully, you'll be good as new. Well, I would hope so. Of course, with me, <laughs> I can be a bit bizarre, so maybe I'll be more bizarre when I come out of this. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining me again. It's been fun, uh, and I will see you next Thursday at 3 o'clock with my wife, Suzanne, who co-wrote uh, Together in a Dream and Remembering the Magic. Uh, and uh, we tell different chapters, different parts of our stories of working at Walt Disney World. So join us next week. Uh, be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, wave, Romina. Yeah, let's wave, everybody. Have a great magical weekend and a Disney magical weekend. And thank you for joining me. It's been absolutely terrific.